When it comes to plants that make us itch, poison ivy and poison oak are usually the first thing that most people think of. But there is another plant that can cause a painful and annoyingly itching rash in the same way, poison sumac, Toxicodendron vernix. Like its cousins, eastern poison ivy and Atlantic poison oak, poison sumac also contains the oil urushiol that can cause a dermatological reaction in the majority of people who have contact with it. But why are poison ivy and poison oak so well known and poison sumac much less often heard about? Part of it has to do with the range of poison sumac. While eastern poison ivy can be found throughout eastern North America and Atlantic poison oak is widely distributed in the south, poison sumac has a more restricted native range. While a map showing the states in which it can be found makes it look like poison sumac is everywhere, it is mainly only found in the deep south, along the Atlantic seaboard, into the northeast, and around the Great Lakes. But it isn't found everywhere in those areas as poison sumac has very specific soil requirements. It is almost always found growing in partial to full sun, in moist to wet, acidic, muck, peat, or sandy soils that contain a high amount of decaying organic matter. Flooding doesn't bother it, and poison sumac can survive months in standing water. In other words, poison sumac is a wetland species, and it is unlikely to be found any place without consistently moist soils. So unless you like to channel your inner Shrek and enjoy hanging out in swamps or other wetlands, I mean, who doesn't, right? You are not likely to encounter poison sumac. If you love to learn about cool native plants that live in wetlands, put on your muck boots and slog on over to that like button. Now that we know where poison sumac lives, we can talk about its distinguishing features. Poison sumac grows as a large shrub and can be from 10 to 25 feet tall with a narrower spread and can have a trunk up to six inches in diameter. Often it will be multi-trunked as it tends to produce sprouts from its base. The form of the crown is usually open and loose. Bark on the trunk is light gray and smooth with scattered raised lenticels. Bark on the larger branches is likewise light gray with fewer lenticels. Smaller twigs are variable in shades of orange, tan, and brown with smooth bark and small lenticels and large heart-shaped leaf scars on the older growth. The twigs end in a prominent purplish red terminal bud. The pinnately compound leaves are arranged alternately on the twigs and can be from six to 14 inches long and have seven to 13 leaflets. The leaflets are from two to four inches long by one to one and three quarters of an inch wide, are more or less oval and have smooth edges. The leaflets are a pleasing medium to dark green above and pale green below and smooth on both sides. The short stems, the petioles that connect the leaflets to the main stem of the leaf, the rachis, are bright red in color and can be up to one quarter of an inch long. The rachis and the petiole of the compound leaf is normally reddish yellow to red. Fall color consists of brilliant shades of orange and red. Overall, poison sumac is an attractive shrub. Just don't let it fool you with its good looks. Be sure what you are looking at before snuggling up next to it to take a selfie for your plant nerd profile. Before moving on to the flowers and fruits, I wanna take a second to mention a couple of plants that poison sumac is often confused with. The first are the true sumacs, also called the edible sumacs by some, the roost species, of which there are several native to Eastern North America. Aside from the common name sumac, and being in the same family, the Anacardiaceae or the cashew family, these two plants have little in common. Look quite different when examined and can easily be told apart in the field. Another plant that I think looks much more like poison sumac are ash saplings, the Fraxinus species. Even though at first glance they do look similar, they are also easy to tell apart in the field. I don't have time to deep dive into how to tell poison sumac from the true sumacs and the ash species in this video, but if you would like to see that covered in a future video, let me know down in the comments. The small, five-petaled, whitish-green flowers of poison sumac are produced in downward-hanging panicles that may be up to eight inches long and around four inches wide that emerge from the leaf axles. Bloom period is during the summer and usually lasts around two weeks. After the blooms fade, small, round, green, berry-like fruits called droops form and will turn white to grayish as they ripen in the fall. The droops are quite persistent and will hang on the shrub well into winter, unless they are eaten by wildlife, which we will get to in a minute. One thing to note about poison sumac is that it is a dioecious shrub most of the time. 
meaning it usually has separate male and female plants, so not all shrubs will form droops that can aid in winter identification. Don't take a lack of droops in the winter as confirmation that a shrub is not poison sumac. It may just be a male shrub, or the critters may have already devoured the droops. However, the panicles that held the droops usually persist long after the droops are gone and can be used as a clue to help identify poison sumac in winter. Having a good field guide or plant identification app can help sort out some of these confusing plants. And we have all of our favorites linked on our Backyard Ecology Recommendations page. All of our favorite guides to critters, birds, insects, our favorite nature-related books, and the equipment that we use here at Backyard Ecology are all linked on that page. Be sure to check it out at the link in the description. The flowers of poison sumac may be small, but they are sought out by smaller native bees and flies, which are drawn to them for the nectar and pollen they produce. Even though poison sumac can cause a rash in most people that encounter it, insects, birds, and most species of mammals are totally immune to it. The foliage is eaten by a wide variety of insects and it is used as a host plant by the caterpillars of several moth species, including those of the eyed Paectes moth. The persistent droops are a winter food for many species of songbirds and game birds such as the ruffed grouse. Mammals may also browse on poison sumac, especially rabbits which are known to browse on the bark and twigs during the winter. I talked a bit about how poison sumac can be confusing to ID at times. But the master of confusion when it comes to Toxicodendron identification is Eastern Poison Ivy, Toxicodendron radicans. It is a plant that can be used to define the biological term phenotypic plasticity. And you can learn all about it and what phenotypic plasticity means in this video. And be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.